afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. We have quite an audience, and we really do appreciate you taking your time to spend some time with us today to review the basics of LED white light technology. We have quite an audience today, and we do appreciate it. We have from Canada to South America, from the Bahamas to Hawaii. So quite a few time zones there, and I know it's quite early for many of you. We hope to make this worth your while. So without further ado, let's begin. Today we will address what is an LED, advantages of LED systems, challenges that we still have with LED, actual performance of LED versus what you might have heard, how the life of LED luminaires and light bulbs is measured, which is quite different from any other light source, lumen maintenance, long-term data, actual data, and key factors when choosing an LED system as well as driver reliability. So let's get started. What is an LED? An LED is a light-emitting diode. It's an LED or a semiconducting device. It produces light when electric current flows through it. It's a light source like HID, fluorescent, incandescent, and the others. Also known as SSL, which stands for solid state lighting, SSL is kind of an umbrella term in all different types of solid state lighting technologies. Since LED uses this technology, the term SSL and LED are often interchangeable. You see often SSL, sometimes LED, they are completely interchangeable. Solid state light emitting diode, same. LEDs were first developed in the 60s, but they had only a very small amount of light. There was really nothing practical about them. Later, they became kind of indicators. You probably saw it for the first time on your stereo equipment or television. Now these days, telephones, calculators, watches. With the advancements in LED technology, particularly with white light LED technology, we now have LEDs as a practical light source. An LED system consists of several components. One without the other makes them all pretty much useless. Performance, when used together, that really is the measurement for how a solid state or an LED fixture or light bulb works. This, this system starts with the light source, in this case LED. An LED driver is required. That's a self-contained power source. It's more or less a power supply that functions like a fluorescent ballast. A fluorescent ballast is to fluorescent lamps what a driver is to LED. It provides voltage and regulates current flow. LEDs are DC by nature, not AC, so the driver also functions to convert from AC to DC. Multiple LEDs are combined into what are called arrays. You have often see them. They look like a dime or a nickel or a quarter-sized yellow chip. That is multiple LEDs combined into an array. The number of LEDs and the placement of the array in the lamp or the fixture will dictate the photometrics. The luminaire or the fixture is the final component. This is the surrounding materials constructed for optical and thermal control. Again, this is very similar to traditional lighting where you have lenses, reflectors, refractors, ballasts, lamps to get the desired light levels in your application. Advantages for LED. More efficient light source. Longer life, environmentally friendly, that is that there's no heavy metals like mercury or lead. Less light loss, cold temperature operation, instant on, no infrared or ultraviolet emissions. This is just a short list of many advantages. The LED light source produces more lumens per watt. This requires a lower wattage lamp or fixture to produce the same amount of light, which results in a lower energy consumption, obviously. Typical LED fixtures are rated at 50,000 hours, lamps generally 25 to 35,000 hours. At 50,000 hours, this is 5.7 years if it's on 24-7-365. There's a greater chance of this technology going obsolete before the product needs to be replaced when everything is done right. The term L70, which you've probably heard and we'll speak a little bit more on later, this is often used in the context of describing the life of the LEDs useful life of an LED is defined at the point in which the light has declined to 70% or declined by 30%. This is known as L70. I will say that there are major Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies that are utilizing LED technology, and they've made it 
their own corporate decisions that L60 or L65 will be the point in which they will look at replacing the fixture. So this is not in stone. L70 is just a universal point in time that we can all compare on an apples-to-apples basis. As I mentioned earlier, no heavy metals like mercury are used in the product, so we're not filling the landfills with heavy metals like, frankly, we are doing with compact fluorescent lamps and fluorescent lamps and HID lamps. LEDs are more directional. By that, we mean that it's the light is all going in a single direction. In that case, with a properly designed bulb or fixture, you have much less light loss than you would with, say, an incandescent or a fluorescent. The LED light source is not negatively impacted from lower ambient temperatures. They love the cold, actually, unlike fluorescents, which have lower lumen outputs and have a struggle starting in a cold environment. There's no warm-up time needed. With a properly designed LED luminaire or bulb with the proper driver, uh, you should have 100% light instantly. There's also, as I mentioned earlier, no infrared, no ultraviolet emissions, which, unlike fluorescent, it allows these products to be used in places where UV or IR can be destructive, such as museums and libraries. There's still challenges, though, with LED. Color consistency is getting better, but may not be up to par with some of the other light technologies like fluorescence. Thermal management, although, you know, when we talk about advances in LED technology, we are almost universally speaking about the lumen output, maybe the quality of the light that's getting better with every generation. But one of the things that LEDs have improved greatly on is the thermal limitation. In other words, properly performing LEDs are based on the temperature or a maximum temperature. Those maximum temperatures are getting higher and higher. So what does that mean? That means that LEDs will perform in hotter and hotter applications. It means that we'll have slower lumen depreciation. It means that we'll save money and cost by not having as much heat sinking and the like. Still some issues with dimming system compatibilities. For the most part, we are dimming bulbs with triac-type systems or a kind of a modified incandescent dimming system. And fixtures, for the most part, we are dimming with a 0 to 10 volt dimming system, which does not dim through the AC wires, but require another set of low voltage wires to be run to the fixture. This is vastly misunderstood in the industry. Maybe a future webinar will focus on dimming systems for LED fixtures and bulbs, which I think the industry uh, could use. There's also a lack of standards, and let me say that in a lot of ways, the, the standards and the new rules and measurements, tools that we have, have come at unprecedented speeds because of the push by the DOE, the Environmental Protection Agency, the lighting industry in general, and environmental reasons. We are pushing quickly to adopt new rules so that we're all on the same page, but right now there are still some standards missing, IES, ANSI, others are working diligently to get those standards out there. Meanwhile, you have the freedom of the market that's really allowing the best performers, the best price points to flow to the top, and manufacturers are designing dimming systems to meet those advanced trolls that are out there. And there's still a big issue with unsubstantiated manufacturer claims. Frankly speaking, there are factories in China that were making T-shirts three and four years ago, and they're making LED luminaires and light bulbs today. And their claims are, well, unsubstantiated, no third parties. It's very difficult to compete with them in the same market where we have very high standards, third-party verification, but we all are competing at the same price point. So that has been some of an issue, and you need to be careful about working with those manufacturers that don't have third-party verification of their claims. Color consistency is another challenge with LEDs, both from fixture to fixture within the same job, as well as color shift over time, which happens after a thousand hours or so if the LEDs are not driven properly or manufactured properly. You must purchase LEDs from a reputable manufacturer with testing data that will support their spec points. This is very important. For us at MaxLight, as a LED fixture manufacturer and bulb manufacturer, we are only dealing with manufacturers who have LM80 test reports, or in other words, third-party verification of their claims. This ensures color consistency. Colors are categorized in LEDs in what are called bins, bins for white light LEDs. LED manufacturers use binning to manage variations in the LED performance during mass production. This includes CRI, color, 
as well as lumen output and other parameters. A challenge to the LED is the thermal management. It's a myth that LEDs do not produce heat. I hear that way too often. Would you believe last year at Lightfair, I met with a small booth. They had an interesting looking product. I asked them how they were thermally managing the junction temperature, and the gentleman told me, don't worry, LEDs don't produce any heat. I knew right away that I was dealing with somebody who did not understand the technology, but I worried about all the other people who were waiting in line to get pricing from this company on their product. So ask about what their thermal design is and how they're managing the heat. If they can't answer that question, they probably were making t-shirts not that long ago, and you need to move on to a reputable manufacturer. Because of the technology that's required to produce LEDs, they have traditionally had a higher price point than other conventional light sources. This challenge is somewhat coming into line to some degree because when you look at your return on investment, we have a much longer life and there's a lot of energy savings. And as the technology goes forward, we're also making these LEDs at lower, or they are making these LEDs at lower and lower costs. A little difficult to displace a $4 CFL with a $20, $30, $40, $50 LED, but uh, the prices are coming down and your return on investment is likely to be greater even with the higher initial investment. Mossite, by the way, has return on investment tools for all of our products, and you should tap into those. Make sure that we're doing the right thing for our customers, and also you could present to them exactly when they're going to get their money back in this investment in the form of reduced energy and maintenance costs. LEDs are championed as a, a versatile light source with multiple control options, but as I mentioned earlier, there are compatibility issues. You must be wary of that and careful of that. Contact both the dimmer control people and the luminaire producing people and seek their advice on compatibility. You cannot assume that an incandescent dimmer switch that you had in the wall earlier or a fluorescent dimming system that you might have had in the building earlier is going to be compatible with the dimmer system. All traditional lighting products, LED-based products sold in the U.S. are subject to industry standards. I mentioned earlier that there is a lack of standards, but we are, and they are working on them quickly. To accommodate LEDs, some existing controls and test procedures have been modified. This has been very, very helpful. While in other cases, new standards are being developed. ANSI, the IES, have published standards addressing some aspects of LEDs. However, there's more to go. DOE, who's been very, very progressive in promoting this technology, has conducted numerous tests of LED lamps and fixtures. These tests are called the Caliper test. This is off-the-shelf testing. They go into the market, they buy the products, they test the products, and they compare the product to the manufacturer's claims. And 80% of the fixtures that they're buying are not fixtures and lamps, are not meeting the manufacturer's claims. There's a lot of reasons for that, but you can, you can avoid this by working with manufacturers, again, who have third-party verification of their specifications. On another note, just because the LED replacement bulb fits in the socket, it doesn't mean that it should be installed into that socket. For instance, a recessed downlight fixture that has a enclosed lens in the front is not going to facilitate an LED well, probably going to overheat life and lumen output will be negatively impacted. Color could shift. By removing that bottom lens, it becomes a very viable application for a well-designed product. So again, just because the bulb fits in the socket doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good application for the particular bulb in hand. Some fluorescent tubes have been doing tremendous life. Max Light and others have 20 plus thousand hour life T8 and T5 lamps. And in some applications where controls are not an issue, fluorescent might still be the most cost-effective way. I will say that that's probably not for much longer as the efficacy or the lumens per watt of LEDs has grown considerably just in the last 12 months, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. And also, consider your safety ratings. This is something that you have to keep in mind when you're buying LED products. Not all of them have the ETL slash UL that's required. So let's talk about the performance of LED. You know, we are reading the trade journals and sometimes even in just the daily newspapers, there's articles about LEDs all the time. Cities that are investing in LED technology for their roadway and streetlights, just new breakthroughs in the technology. We read articles of 200 plus uh, lumens per watt. This is phenomenal. This is 
pretty much unprecedented for incandescent, fluorescent, and many other technologies. But when you go to buy that fixture or that bulb, you're finding lumens per watt closer to 70, 80, 90. These days, 100, 110 lumens per watt can be found. So what happened? You know, we read the article about 200 lumens per watt. I'm buying a fixture that's 100 lumens per watt. Well, first off, that 200 lumen per watt is not actually commercially available. They'll write articles about it. It is a major breakthrough, and I'm sure soon they will be commercially available. But today, about the best that I can go and buy in mass production and mass quantities is about 160 lumens per watt. And we update, and we've shown a chart like this, similar charts in the past. I remember starting where the raw LED was 100 lumens per watt. So we've pretty much doubled what is available in the market in the last three, three and a half years. Now, once you've got that raw chip, you've got to put it with the other components to make it into a viable luminaire or bulb. So we're going to have our thermal derating. We're probably going to underdrive it a bit due to temperature. We have some optical efficiency. We may add lenses and the like. We have a driver efficiency. You know, we have to power that up too. It uses some energy. So you end up with maybe 100 lumens per watt with 160 lumen per watt LED chip. So you read about 200 lumens per watt. You can buy 160, but that's in a raw LED. The luminaire, the light bulb, we're at 100, 110 lumens per watt today, which is well above fluorescent. Very quickly on the measurement of life, real quick, all other light sources, every other one prior to LED, the way that we calculated the life of that lamp is to burn 100 lamps. When 50% have failed, you round off that hour, and that's the life. So what that means is a 10,000-hour compact fluorescent lamp, at 10,000 hours, approximately half will have failed. Apologize for that. I hope that this is better. LM80 data is the raw data that the third-party laboratories produce for manufacturers such as MaxLide to use. We don't really look at their catalogs. We're looking at their LM80 data. LM79 data. Now, this is where we take those LED chips that have been LM80 tested. We design those chips into our luminaire. We put it with the driver, the proper heat sinks and optics, everything that we need. And then we then send that luminaire to a third-party laboratory, and they will LM79 test it. They're testing to make sure that we don't negatively impact the LEDs. So it is important for you to consider only LED fixtures that have been third-party tested, and those would be LM79 reports. Ask for the LM79 reports. Most reputable companies can provide you with LM79 reports. MaxLight, as a matter of fact, has our LM79 reports downloadable right from our website. Now, to calculate the life of a product, we go into what is today considered the most modern way. This is the IES recommended way for calculating the life of an LED luminaire. We open up a TM21 spreadsheet, which was generated by the IES. We plug in the data from the LM80 report, which was for the raw chip. We plug in data from the LM79 report, which is the finished luminaire. And then it, in turn, tells us what the L70 life is. So this is today the modern way. So you might have noticed that about half a year ago, many manufacturers overnight changed their specifications from L70 50,000 hours to L70 100,000 hours. Overnight, literally. Many manufacturers did this. That was due to the TM21 reporting, which supports them, that supports that conclusion. MaxLight is willing and able to run a TM21 report for you at any time for any of our products. So what does that translate into? That translates into 100,000 hour lifetimes for LED products. You're probably going to ask me to back that up, so we will do that. We're looking at L70 points that are out there at 100,000 hours and beyond. And here's some third-party testing to back up that statement. This is not a projection. This is actual measurements over 40,000 hours. Let me interrupt myself here and say that 10 years ago, we were all assuming these things. We were doing our best to calculate how these things would be. But today, we have actual products in the field for 50, 60, and 70,000 hours. So here's an example of LED chip running for 40,000 hours. You can see at 40,000 hours, it's pretty much at L97 or L98. In other words, it's only lost 2 or 3% of its lumen output. Note here also the ambient temperature at 25C, and we'll talk more about how temperature impacts all of this. 
We showed Cree. Let's uh, talk about the Philips LumaLED. This slide is a little busy, but I'd like to just focus your attention to some points. Now, first off, this is the red line is the line in which the chips are being measured. You'll see here the six time test time. In other words, this is uh, how far out you are allowed to estimate or project is six times whatever the actual testing has been. You can see the 25 and 35,000 hour mark. Now, what this curve is showing us that at its depreciation rate currently, this is going to reach close to 150,000 hours at its L70 point. Now, a lot can happen in between, but this is where the data is today. And folks, this is pretty typical with a properly designed product. Now let's talk about how temperature impacts these things. At 55C, the blue line here, you can see that we're projecting out here at, well, we're at about 38, 37,000 hours, and we're still at about L88, which is pretty good. If we put it up to 70C, that drops down to about L83 at the same price point, so a steeper lumen depreciation. And if we go all the way up to 85C, we're not even going to make 40,000 hours before we hit the L70 point. So you can see how temperature has a tremendous impact. John is asking about driver life, and we are going to talk about that, John. Don't you worry. Key factors when you're choosing an LED system, thermal management, junction temperature, efficiency and application efficiency. Managing the heat in the light source is called thermal management. It's extremely important. Excess heat directly negatively impacts the life of these products, can cause color shifting and overall dissatisfaction. The junction temperature is the highest temperature on the actual LED itself that is allowed. Three things affect the junction temperature of an LED. That's the current of the driver, that's the thermal path. The thermal path, well, we'll discuss that a little more. And the ambient temperature. In general, the higher the drive current, the greater the heat. Heat must be moved away from the chip at the rate that it's being generated to maintain the expected output, life, and color, and so on. The amount of heat that can be removed depends on the ambient temperature and the design of the thermal path. So, again, well-designed, third-party verified and you can have a good fixture that's worth every penny that you pay for it. Energy efficiency of light sources is typically measured in lumens per watt, meaning the amount of light produced for each watt of electricity consumed by the light source. This is known as efficacy or source lumens. Luminous efficacy is an important indicator of energy efficiency, but it doesn't tell the whole story particularly with regard to directional light sources like LEDs. Due to the directional nature of the light output, LEDs potentially have a higher application efficiency or delivered lumens compared to other light sources. Folks, we did a whole webinar on the subject of total lumens versus delivered lumens. It's up at YouTube. It's up at maxlight.com. It is one of our most viewed webinars, and it is something that we all really should understand total lumens versus delivered lumens. I'll give you a one-minute version now. When you look at a three-lamp T8 fixture, each lamp having, let's say, 3,000 lumens, so three lamps is 9,000 lumens. Believe me, you're not getting 9,000 lumens delivered to the desktop or to the work area. The difference between the total lumens of 9,000 and the lumens on the actual desktop, which is called delivered lumens, are, is all lost light, either light that's gone in the direction in which is not useful to us, light that got trapped in the fixture, and many other reasons. So please do take some time. I'm asking Blake now if he could also send a link to our delivered lumens versus total lumens webinar when we send you all a copy of this presentation. Driver reliability. Basically, as I mentioned earlier, a driver is a power supply. Power supplies have been built for 100 years. I'll put it this way. If I go to a power supply catalog with multiple manufacturers and I can find a power supply with a specific set of performance parameters and I can pay $8 for it, and I can flip through that catalog and find another power supply that has the exact same performance parameters and it costs $80. Believe me, the $8 one is not going to perform as long and as well as the $80 one. So you get what you pay for. 
What you're really worried about is the quality of their electrolytic caps, how they're heat sinking their transistors, how are they cooling the components. You don't need to get involved in the design of their driver. What you need to do, though, is take a look at the third-party reports to make sure that it did not indicate problems like severe lumen depreciation or color shifting, which can be measured in these reports. Also, my personal advice is that you want a driver that's going to be supported by the fixture luminaire manufacturer that sold you the product. You don't want to find out a year down the road if there was a problem with the driver that the manufacturer is just going to point you to their driver supplier. And now you have to deal with somebody who you don't, don't even know. You want to deal with manufacturers who are going to support and warranty the entire product. And you want to understand what that warranty period is. There are a lot of LED Luminaire manufacturers today that have a one-year warranty, others with a two. Today, I think five years is much more typical. And by under special circumstances, I've seen beyond five years as, as much as 10 and sometimes more. Now, folks, before you run away, because we have concluded that portion, I want to do two things. I want to just tell you about a couple of services that MaxLight provides for you and your customers, and then I'm going to ask you to take a quick poll. One more minute. I want to remind you we have university.maxlight.com, which has the Earn Your Lighting Degree section. If you have a colleague who is new to the lighting industry, maybe they were focusing on wire and cable before, and now they need to focus on lighting, have them go to the MaxLight University. It is just like any other online university, you choose your courses, you go through the courses, you take your test, you graduate. The only difference is it's completely free and it's non-commercial. MaxLight does not come up once going through your lessons. I also want to let you know that we do do custom training for you and your customers via the Internet. We could do lunch and learns. We can do specific MaxLight product or a broad overview. And as is the case today, we could do a focus on general technology or LED technology. We have a large number of people who are utilizing our utility rebate services, including the rebate finder, custom flyers, product lists by certification, and now we will even help you or even do for you the utility required paperwork. So this is the new utility rebate paperwork service. I wish it had a sexier name, but it is a great service. Take advantage of it if it will aid you. Now, quickly, I'm going to ask if you could take a poll. Just let us know how many people are watching. If you could do that before you exit, we would greatly appreciate it. I want to thank you all again for your time and your attention. We know your time is valuable, and we hope to contribute to your business. Have a great rest of the day.